Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this press conference following the Gimnish meeting here in Athens. Uh, I will first of all invite the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs Minister Venizelos to make a few introductory remarks. I'll then hand the floor to the High Representative and we will then have time for two questions from the Greek press and two questions from my side. So please, Minister. Thank you. I'm here just to welcome publicly Kathy Ashton and uh, my counterparts from uh, the other European countries hosting uh, the Gimnich Council, this informal meeting of ministers of European and foreign affairs. It's a great pleasure and a great opportunity for every European presidency because of uh, the high level of uh, debates. It's a very great pleasure for me to be able to welcome Cathy Ashton here publicly and officially, and uh, it's been a pleasure to organize the informal meeting of foreign ministers. The Gimnich is a great opportunity for any presidency, for the Greek presidency, because of the very high quality of the debates. And I think uh, that will be quite clear from what Cathy Ashton has to say by way of introduction and from our discussion thank with you. you. Very much. Can I begin by thanking you uh, very much, Deputy Prime Minister, and your team for the excellent organisation of this meeting and this wonderful venue. We've had a really interesting two days. And in this setting, we've had the opportunity to talk about our neighbourhood, both south and east, and our relations with strategic partners. Not surprisingly, Ukraine was top of our agenda, and I can remind everyone that we remain united in our determination to act together to deal with the threat to Ukraine's sovereignty and stability. I invited this morning our candidate countries to join us so we could talk with them as well about the latest developments in our neighborhood. We had a very good discussion uh, we covered a range of different issues. We talked about relations in the Western Balkans. We talked about the ongoing challenges that we see in Syria uh, and our concerns about uh, Libya and also uh, the work that we're doing on all of our neighborhood countries to help them uh, develop economically and politically. Uh, we think of the successes of Tunisia and we also think of the challenges currently uh, in Egypt. We welcomed to our dear friend Elmer Brock, the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the European Parliament, who came to join us yesterday, again, in order to give us his perspectives and the perspectives of the European Parliament on some of these issues. So, an important two days of uh, deep discussion. The Gimnik is a place where ministers can talk freely uh, about the issues of concern, and we were able to uh, relate to each other in terms of how we take forward our policy. And we continue as ever to develop the work uh, that we are doing. Just one other point, because I'm conscious we have a number of issues. We have the um, elections in Afghanistan, which we're monitoring carefully. And I also want to impress on everyone our complete support for Secretary Kerry and the work that he is doing on the Middle East peace process at what is an extremely challenging time. Thank you. The first question I saw was Alexandra. If you could just present yourself, Alexandra, before you ask your question. There's a microphone coming. <laughs> Two microphones coming. Hello, Alexandra Mayer Hodal with the German press agency DPA. Uh, Lady Ashton, two, question, two quick questions, if I may. First, on Turkey, um, was there any discussion with the Turkish representatives or among the ministers as far as the YouTube ban, the Twitter ban, uh, um, EU concerns about these measures? Uh, and secondly, on Afghanistan, if you could say a bit more, how concerned are you about the violence we've seen in the run up to the elections? Thank you very much. Thank you. On Turkey, of course, we raise with our Turkish colleagues, as we do in all situations, the issues and concerns that we have about uh, what is happening. We hope that post the local elections, things will now move forward. We noted the Constitutional Court's decision, uh, and uh, we also made it clear that social media plays an incredibly important part uh, in uh, the life of all communities, uh, including Turkey, and our Turkish colleagues 
talk to us about the reforms that they're expecting to see coming forward. So it was an open and frank discussion. Um, on the uh, Afghan elections, this will be a historic moment if we get this uh, right, this democratic transition. We want to see everybody participating, including, I would say, all the women of Afghanistan. And uh, we welcome what's been done to try and prepare for these elections. The latest information I have has been that things are, are going forward, uh, and we wait to see now what the results will, uh, will bring. Mr. Thanasopoulos from the Greek press, from the Vima. Thank you very much. Uh, Angelos Thanasopoulos from newspaper to Vima in Athens. I have a question uh, for uh, both uh, Lady Ashton and uh, Mr. Venizelos. I would like to ask you, uh, are you concerned by the uh, recent, um, I would say, aggressive comments by the NATO Secretary General and uh, Secretary General Britlove uh, on Ukraine, and do you believe that they help uh, to de-escalate the crisis in Ukraine? Thank you very much. We work very closely with the NATO Secretary General, uh, with Saka, and um, I attended the NATO Foreign Minister's meeting where we were able to discuss the situation uh, in Ukraine. Uh, you can describe the comments however you like, but I think what was very important was the unity of the NATO countries who are working closely together to address real concerns about uh, what is happening uh, in Ukraine and the consequences for the thinking that we all need to have um, about the future. Minister, would you like to add something? As you know, <clears throat> Greece participates always in the European and the Euro-Atlantic uh, mainstream. Uh, our position is very clear. Our policy is a policy of principles. Our pillar is always the need for uh, respect of uh, the international legal order. But on the other hand, it's very important for us to keep open the channels of political and diplomatic dialogue because we need a consensual, political, applicable solution. The main issue now is the de-escalation. The next hand I saw was Daniel. Um, you still have a question? If you put your hand up so the microphone can find you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Daniel Prosler, Süddeutsche Zeitung. Uh, Ms. Ashton, uh, uh, did you talk about the Weimar Triangle proposal uh, to consult Russia uh, on the talks with uh, uh, Ukraine, Moldova, uh, and uh, Georgia about the association agreement? Uh, and would you personally say that it would be a good signal towards Russia now to consult Russia on this issue? Well, actually, if you read the paper, what you'll see that the three ministers, who incidentally, of course, went uh, on my behalf, on behalf of the whole of the European Union to Ukraine, and for which I thank them very much, they were talking about some of the technical underpinning issues. And we have within the EU, uh, the Commission has been talking to Russia about the implications of our agreements with other countries. Not least because by the analysis that I've seen, uh, the free trade agreement with Ukraine would have a positive impact on the Russian economy. And we think that's an important message for Russia uh, to get. So all contributions are very welcome to our discussions and deliberations about how we go forward. And you will see over these coming days that we continue to engage with Russia, uh, with our uh, Ukrainian colleagues uh, and with the United States in making sure that we have a strong way forward. Last question for the Greek press. Ms. Bethany. Thank you very much. One more question about Ukraine matter, concerning uh, the Ukraine matter. If the sanctions of the European Union turn out ineffective, what will be the next step, the alternative plan of the European Union? Thank you very much. Well, you'll have seen from the conclusions of the European Council that I think there are two aspects to this. One is uh, the importance of ensuring that we are prepared to uh, take measures if that is felt necessary, and work is ongoing to do that. Uh, secondly, that the importance of trying to persuade Russia to de-escalate the situation and to, as ever, 
uh, work closely with Ukraine to try and find a way through this. And I think this is what Minister Venezuela was talking about, the importance of ensuring that we, we do that. And that's the dialogue that we are constantly engaged in and will continue with. Perhaps I can give you a brief response uh, in Greek, both to the Greek press and to the international press. Sanctions are not an end in themselves. Sanctions are a tool, an instrument that we use, always in the framework of international law. And the purpose of those sanctions is to ensure that international law is complied with. But above all, the idea is to create the preconditions for a diplomatic and political solution. So, as Baroness Ashton quite correctly correctly said, the essential question now is de-escalation. But beyond de-escalation, the goal is to create an appropriate climate so that we can come up with a definitive and functional solution. Thank you very much.